in the diagram below, we have a graph of F, which is a tan graph, um, tan X minus 45. So here we can see it over here, and it's drawn over a domain of minus 90 up to 180. So minus 90 up to 180. First question, write down the period. Now remember that period, um, in a normal like sin graph or tan or cos, we've got three, per we've got four parameters, sorry, sin, k, bracket, x minus p, plus q. If it was a cos graph, exactly the same thing. And if it was a tan graph, exactly the same thing. k, x minus p, plus q. Now I've made vi videos that detail what a, k, p, and q actually do to a graph. Now we need to understand what period is. Period is how many degrees to make one complete graph. Now we should know for a normal sin and cos, it is 360. So there's a sin graph. So it would have a period of 360 to make one cycle. And then a cos graph is also 360. A tan graph, a normal tan graph, um, has an asymptote at 90 and 270. And then it does something like this. So there's like a normal tan graph. A normal tan, okay, so the period of a normal sin, um, so period of a normal sin is 360, as well as a cos actually, cos and sin is 360. A normal tan is 180. However, one of these letters causes the period of a graph to change, and that letter is K. Now, as we can see, there is no K over here. There is no number over there. You could think of it as a one. That means that this tan graph is not gonna have its period any different to a normal tan graph, which is 180. If there was a number here, then you would use the following. The new period is equal to the old period or the normal period divided by K. So if there was like a number two over here, then you would say 180, which is the normal period divided by two. But there is no number there. You can think of it as a one. So that means that this period is still gonna be like a normal tan graph. Don't say 360, it's 180. Draw the graph of this over the interval negative 90 and 180 on the grid given in the answer book. Okay, so we can just use this one over here. Show all the intercepts as well as the minimum and maximum points of the graph. Okay, so when you draw a graph, I want you to use your calculator. It is the most easiest way to do it. And so just make sure that your calculator is in normal. Actually, no, we wanna put your calculator into table mode when you are drawing a graph. So the first graph would be um, this one here, but we don't need to go type that in because we don't need to draw that one. We've already got that one given to us. So let's just go straight for minus cos 2x. Now don't worry if yours, if it says F and ours says G, it just means the first, it just means an equation. So you can just go cos um, 2, x. There's nothing different between f and g. If you were going to draw both, then you could use f, and then you could say equals, and then the next one would be g. But we don't have to put anything for g. We're just drawing one graph. Now, the starting position is where they've asked us to start, which is minus 90. The ending position is where they've asked us to end, which is 180. Now, the step is the most important part. The step is the period divided by four. That is a mathematical thing. Now I've told you that a normal cos graph has a period of 360, but that doesn't mean you're just gonna go put 360 there. No, they've given us cos 2x. Now I told you that there are four different parameters that affect, um, and, and, and I said that the k value affects the period. And look at that, in front of the x, they have the number two. So we said that the new period is the original or the normal period divided by K. So the new period of this cos graph is the normal period of a cos graph, which is always 360, divided by the K value, which they've given us as two. 
and so that's gonna be 180. And so that is gonna be the period. So the step is ending up as 45. So here for the step, I want you to put 45 and press equals. And there we have all the different values that we now need. So I'm just gonna go write these down on a piece of paper quickly. I'm sorry if the calculator is a little bit small. Um, I don't know why I'm not, normally I can make the calculator bigger, but this time I can't. Um, so I'm gonna quickly write down those values and then we can go plot those points. So now we're just gonna go plot those points. So the first one was minus 90 and one, which is over there. Then we got a minus 45 and zero, so that's there. Zero and minus one. Uh, 45 and 0, 90 and 1, 135 and 0, and then 180 and minus 1. Okay, so we can just go draw like that. Now they said, please show all the intercepts. Okay, so I guess we could just go fill that in, 45 and 0, um, 135 and 0, and then minus 45 and zero, as well as the ma minimum and maximum points. So this we could put as minus 90 and one. Uh, here we could say 90 and one, and then here we could say zero and negative one. And then, oh, at the end here, 180 and... Okay, now we've drawn all the graphs, fantastic. Now it says write down the range of G. Now G is the, the one that we've just drawn. G range is the y values. So we could say y is an element that goes, the lowest y value is minus one, and the highest y value is one. Square brackets, because the graph actually touches minus one and one. Right, now it says that the graph of g, which is the one we have, which were the one we drew, is shifted 45 degrees to the left to form a graph of h. What is the equation of h? Okay, now remember I told you that there are four parameters. When you move a graph left, you are affecting the x value over there. And when you go left, you are gonna say, um, you are gonna say plus 45. Because when you go left, you say plus, and when a graph moves to the right, you say minus. So we know that it's gonna have, um, we know that the graph originally is this one over here. So we're gonna put negative cos, and then we know that the k value is a two, then we're gonna open up a bracket and we're gonna say x plus 45, and then there is no q value as we can see there. Now I see that they say here in its simplified form, or in its simplest form, um, so I would have agreed that this is actually sufficient for two marks, but then I looked on the memo, I always just double check after I've got the answer to make sure I haven't made any, you know, when you're recording something, you can make a mistake. Um, so what they did is that they then went and multiplied the two into the bracket. So that's two X plus um, 90. And then if you rather just want to, so you can understand the next step, when you plus, order doesn't matter. Now, we know that there are four co-functions. You've got cos of 90 minus x, sin of 90 minus x, um, sin of 90 plus x, cos 90 plus x, and they always become the opposite. So this would become sin, this would become cos, this would become cos, and this would become sin um, of x, x, x. However, this one becomes negative. Now, here we've got x, but if I changed those to 2x, for example, then this would also have to be a 2x. That's the way it works, okay? So here we have a cos 90 plus 2x, cos 90 plus 2x. So it ends up becoming a negative um, sin 2x. But we already have a negative there, so we're gonna end up getting two negatives like that, but two negatives make a positive. And this is the answer that they have on the memo for h of x. They have it as um, h of x equals to sin of 2x. So if you did leave it like this, I think they only gave you one out of two. So you only lost one mark, okay? Now it says for this question, use the graphs to determine the values of x for which f of x, which is the, yeah, um, the tan graph. So let's just do tan graph, they wanna know where is it bigger than one. So if y is one, that's this line here. So they wanna know where is it above this red line that I've just drawn. 
So we can see that it's above that red line over here. Now you, you always want to stop at the asymptote, okay? So we could say that it is when x is, I'll show you interval notation and set border notation. So we'll say when x is bigger than minus 90, but smaller than this asymptote, which is negative 45. Or, oh, they only want us to go between minus 90 and 90. Okay, so we won't, um, we won't include this part over here because that goes beyond 90. So it would only be that. Um, in interval notation, you would say x is an element from minus 90 up to minus 45. Round brackets because they're not including the one. This one says, where is 2 cos 2x minus 1 bigger than 0? Now, just remember that this original graph that we have here is negative cos 2x. So what you must do is you must take 2 cos, x, 2 cos 2x minus 1 and try to make this, which is minus cos 2x. So to make this negative, I could take it to the other side. So we would end up with that. Now don't change the sign just because you moved that over. You only change the sign when you divide by a negative. Now to get um, this part like we have over here, all I have to do is divide by two. So I divide both sides by two. So negative cos two x. This two doesn't divide by the way. That's the angle, you can't divide that. Um, and then here you're gonna end up with, okay, I can't write there for some reason. A half. Now, check this out. We have negative cos 2x, which is the equation of the graph. So now we can just look at the graph itself when analyzing the question. They want to know where is this graph smaller than minus a half. So we go to the y value of minus a half, which is, okay, well, if this is um, minus one, then minus a half would be Okay, maybe I should use a thin line. Minus a half, like there. And they want to know where is this graph smaller than minus a half? So where is it under minus a half? So that would be um, over here, and then again over here, but they only want the answer between minus 90 and 90. So it's over here. But the problem is we don't know what, um, we don't know what the x value is there and there. But that's okay, we can find it. So to find out what the x values are there, we have to go solve an equation. We have to solve where is the graph equal to minus a half? Like what is the x value at those points? So I'm just gonna switch these around. I'm gonna bring this over to this side and I'm gonna take that over to that side. So it becomes positive cos 2x equals to a half. Now it's just a general solution kind of question. So to get my reference angle, I just have to say shift cos of a half, and that'll give us um, 60 degrees. That's your reference angle. Now they're saying that cos is a positive. So cos is positive in quadrant one and quadrant four. So in quadrant one, um, we could say that two x equals, because it's a two x over there, 60 plus k360, k element of z. Then if you divide everything by two, you would end up with that over there. Then for quadrant four, you would say 360 minus your reference angle plus k360, k element z. And so if you solve this, you'd end up with two x is equal to 300 k element z. And then if you divide by two, you end up with 150 plus k times 180 k element z. So we now need to try get these answers here. Now I estimate that that is about 30 degrees and I estimate that that is about minus 30. So I can get the 30, if I make k equal to zero over here, you know when you get like a specific solution, if I let k equal to zero, then x would be 30. So that would be um, this one over here, that's 30 degrees. Okay, so that's 30 degrees. Now this one, I'm not gonna get it from this one because even if I let k equal minus one, then this whole thing would end up being like negative 150. But if I use this one, and if I let k equal minus one, 
then I get 150 plus, now if k is minus 1, then it ends up being 150 minus 180, which is negative 30. So I know then that this is negative 30. So our original solution we said is between here. So in interval notation, you would say that x is an element going from negative 30 up to 30. If you prefer inter I mean set border notation, you would go x is bigger than negative 30 and smaller than 30.